All right, here is the sample speech. So what I want you all to do is pay attention to the language that I am using. I am using a lot of those metaphors, similes, personifications, uh, oxymorons, irony. I didn't talk about irony in the previous video, but it's there in the, the first speech um, and its assignment. So look up some of those stylistic devices. This speech has them all. And what I want you to do is I want you to identify at least two of my tributes. Remember, the tribute is the direct statement followed by the exemplifications for those direct statements. So two tributes out of the four, because my speech is a little longer than yours. Um, so two tributes plus exemplifications. And then I want you to try and identify at least three three different types of um, stylistic devices. Now, I've already said that I use a tease, tease, reveal in the first part of this, so that can't work. I'm talking about similes, metaphors, alliterations, irony, um, these kinds of things, uh, hyperbole, satire, all of these. That's what I want you to try and find three of. Take notes, and then I'm going to give an extra credit opportunity based upon uh, the participation in it. I'll set up a, sec a, a, a secondary discussion board, and you can bring your answers in there. I'll interact with them, all of it. I might actually set up this as a video um, in the, and then you can just respond to the video. I'm going to see if Canvas will allow me to do that. So here goes. At a time when the United States was under the thumb of Reagan conservatism, he implored us to go crazy, to get nuts. And at a time when Madonna's materialism had so gripped the masses, he proclaimed you didn't need to be rich to be his girl. And at a time when the music industry was its most vulnerable, its, its consumers the most beguiled, he lamented he never meant to cause you any sorrow that he only wanted to see you laughing in the purple rain. So who was he? He was flawlessly and fabulously flamboyant, armed with a screaming guitar in an outrageous fashion and a falsetto that brought the funk and that other four letter word that begins with F. He was a diminutive Titan who towered over the taller but stunted talents of his day. Packing more skill and ability per square inch per pound, he was a five foot tall, hundred pound royal. Who was he? He was Prince. He was a lover, as songs like Pink Cashmere and Little Red Corvette signify. He was pure, unbridled sex on stage, routinely linked to some of the sexiest women of his day. He was the eye that discovered Apollonia and Carmen Electra. He wine dined and loved them all. And he was romantic, as songs like Kiss and Nothing Compares to You exemplify. He could cut to the heart, parting the sea of superficiality, touch and touching the very being of existence. He knew that the world connected beyond just the physical. And despite celebrating the sexuality of humanity with his lyrics, he embraced its very essence through descriptive, cutting lyrics. And when Sinead O'Connor made his song, Nothing Compares to You, a number one hit, in her videos, she cried a single tear. The reason? The words Prince had composed enraptured a memory she held of her dearly departed mother, and it was impossible for her to sing this other person's lyrics and keep separate what those lyrics had inspired within her. But most importantly, he was a hustler. When music turned to video, Prince was on the cutting edge of MTV's new medium. When he transcended the small screen, he turned to the theater, helping to write, compose, star, and direct the rock opera Purple Rain, which also delivered one of the most quintessential rock and roll albums of the era. And when his record label made unrealistic, unrealistic demands of him, he quit. When they wouldn't allow him to use his own given name, Prince, as a solo artist with another label, he rebranded himself as a symbol, as an unspeakable symbol. Since they didn't know how to say it, since they didn't know what to call him, the media took to calling him the artist formerly known as Prince, which, because it was very long, when abbreviated, simply became known as the artist. 
and boy was he ever an artist. When composing When Doves Cry, maybe his singularly most recognizable song, he first created the bass line and then composed the rest of the song around it. He loved that bass line, but he knew it distracted from the rest of the song, so he cut it from production. To make clear, Prince cut the very foundation of a hit song so the song could reach its full hit potential. That's like an author creating a character, writing a book around the character, and then removing that character from the story. Can you imagine Harry Potter without Harry Potter? He knew every button to push to succeed. But even beyond the success, Prince was kind and compassionate, supremely talented, ostensibly charismatic, and beyond his music, also a complete enigma. He loved women, loved the color purple, and even in his later life, proclaimed to love God. So today, when I heard the news that he had died at age 57, I searched for a cause. Some say the flu, some say more nefarious causes mysterious in death, just as in life. So what I have to remember is a lifetime of some of the greatest, most pointed R&B meets blues, meets jazz, meets funk, meets rock and roll ever created from the 1970s to the present. To quote the man, dearly beloved, we are gathered here to get through this thing called life. Well, dearly beloved, gather with me as we celebrate a man who helped many get through life by singing, by dancing, by going crazy, by getting nuts, and maybe even by getting some. Prince would be proud. Thank you. All right, so that is the sample speech. Again, I need you to identify two tributes. They're there, there are four of them. What are two of the tributes? What are two exemplifications for those tributes? Each tribute has a specific story or quote or statistic or something that exemplifies, that proves that tribute. And then what are three different types of, or three different examples, three different times, three different phrasings of, um, you know, whatever I've said that are stylistic devices. We're talking... Uh, what are metaphors, similes, alliterations, personifications, uh, irony, hyperbole, uh, you know, oxymorons, all of those are game for this. Lists, rhetorical questions, um, all of these are on the table for you to kind of identify and figure out. And then lastly, when you're doing your analysis, you know, what is something that really stuck out to you? What is, what is a phrase? What is, what is an idea that really kind of, um, really kind of made my point relevant to you? Maybe you're not familiar with Prince. Obviously, this was a speech that I wrote almost, gosh, it was 2016. Almost, it's been over four years, four years since Prince passed away. So this is a speech that I've been using as an example for four years in, in my classes. Um, you know, what was something that maybe connected to you? Was it the idea? Um, was it, was it his music? Was it the idea that, you know, some of the other ideas that I talk about, I don't want to give away too much because I might accidentally stumble into a, an answer for, uh, you know, some of the tributes. But pay attention, listen, take notes. Um, there's no wrong answers. There's only writer answers. So go ahead and do all of that. This extra credit will be worth 10 points, up to 10 points, based upon your discussion, your, your contribution and then your discussion with others. So that is what's going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and uh, look for the assignment um, upcoming either today or tomorrow as well. All right. Thank you.